Shalom. Welcome to Challenging Torah, a project of the Malibu Jewish Center and Synagogue. Ma tovu ochalecha Yaakov, mishkanotecha Yisrael. We begin, how goodly are your tents, O Jacob, your dwelling places, O Israel, every single Shabbat morning. As I say, turn to the opening of the Shachrit service, and these are our first words that we sing as we declare the beauty of the tents of Israel. Those words are directly from this week's Torah portion, which is called Balak. And Balak is the ruler of Moab, the neighbors, who see the Israelites gathering at his borders and are afraid like a cow is going to lick them up with their tongue. There are so many Israelites in his mind that he does the only thing a ruler can do, not call out an army, not take action. He calls a prophet to curse them. Now, the prophet, Bil'am, is not an Israelite prophet, but is a prophet that directly responds to the name of God, to our God, not a different God. And Bil'am has an intimate working relationship as a non-Israelite with the Israelite God. And Bilam is known as a very powerful prophet, perhaps in power of sorcery, even better than Moses. And Balak, the king of Moab, goes to Bilam and says, Come therefore, I pray you, curse these people. Curse them for me because they are too mighty for me, and perhaps I shall prevail, and then we can defeat them, that I may drive them out of the land. For I know that he whom you bless is blessed, and he who you curse is cursed. Bilam, who has a direct connection with God, says, excuse me, I need to ask my boss, the Holy One. And God replies on the can I curse these people moment, and God replies, you shall not Go with them, you shall not curse the people, for those people, my people, are blessed. Well, Balak says to Bilam, uh, try anyway. And soon a delegation arrives at his door, and Bilam, whose name means without any people at all, so he's not really a loyal prophet or a moral prophet, He's just got this power. And he's asked, and Bilam answers, if Balak would give me his house full of gold and silver, like maybe we're going to talk money here, I would not go beyond the word of the Lord my God. They go back to Balak with this message, and Balak says, hmm, I heard the gold and silver word. Okay. And he sends a group of richer dignitaries more of them, a very prestigious group arrives at his door, knocks again, and says, what do you think? Curse the Jews. And Bilam goes, wait a minute, I can't really do this. Why don't you sleep overnight and wait? Maybe I'll have another little chat with the Lord. So he inquires of the Lord again. God is a little annoyed, actually very annoyed, but says, fine. Whatever you want, go, but you shall not go beyond my word. You shall not curse them, for they are blessed. What part of no didn't you understand? Something we ask our kids all the time. But if you really feel like you need to go, go, but only say the words that I will put in your mouth. So he goes on the journey, saddles his ass, gets on the road, and suddenly, there's a blockage in the road. Now, here's where we have the only comic moment in all of Torah. God is annoyed, and so he sends an angel of the Lord who stands in front of Bilam's donkey, and he blocks the way. Bilam, the prophet that can see beyond and prophesy, can't even see the ass that's in front of him. 
And then in the great Shrek moment of all times, the ass opens his mouth. Milam beats him, and he won't get out of the way, and his foot is kind of crushed into the wall because the ass knows that there's an angel of the Lord with a sword right in front of him. And he beats him, and the ass says, What have I done to you? Am I not your ass that you've ridden on all this time? Was I ever want to do something like that? But I was protecting you. And God, of course, yells at him for not seeing what is before his very eyes, Mr. Big Prophet. The ass, of course, the talking ass, has the last laugh. And uh, it's nice to see a bit of comedy in Torah. So our talking ass is left behind. And Balak comes and meets Bilam. And they look out over the plain where all the Jews are gathered. And three times he says, curse him. Bilam gets up there. He can't do it. Balak goes, maybe if we look from another angle, we could do this. What part of no don't you understand? Again, looks from another angle, can't do it. The third time, Bilam opens his mouth to curse them. And instead he says, How beautiful are your tents, O Jacob, your dwelling places. O Israel. And this curse turns into a blessing and is the way we begin our Shabbat morning. So before we end today, I'd like to mention the power of tents and these tents dwelling together. It's said in the Midrash that each one of these tents faced away from their neighbor's doorway so that each one was unto themselves a household and had the privacy to do what they wanted in their household, even though they were gathered together as community. Right now, we have a question of Big Tent Judaism. Do we all have the right to put our tent on the plane of the Jewish world? Are conservative and reform and reconstructionist and renewal tents given a place? And so this dialogue, this debate in the Jewish people, where some are told that their place is outside of the big tent, is worthy of a Bil'am who has no people. But we are not Bil'am. We are with Am. We are a people. And everyone's tent is different. Yet we are sheltered within that tent Matovuah Halecha Yaakov, Mishkanotecha Yisrael. Shabbat Shalom.